welcome everyone. Sorry, we're uh, a few minutes behind here. Please rise for the uh, pledge. pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. President Hammond? Here. Vice President Daly? Here. Trustee Clements? Here. Trustee Parr? Here. Okay, just want to remind everybody that the next meeting will be April 23rd at 7 p.m. And this is when uh, we will vote on the 2019-20 Putnam Northern Westchester Bosey's budget and trustees. Infor oh, did, did we get the information? We didn't get that yet, did we? It, I, or, I oh, it right it's, it, no, it's, ah, it's, it's right here. It's a hard copy. Sorry, okay, great, thank you. All right, so that's what we have to look forward to. We have, um, a little bit more length in between our meetings so just a reminder due to the spring recess break that's why Dr. Bernante yeah so uh, you actually it was a nice segue I just wanted to remind our board members this evening that BOCES did go ahead and send the materials uh, an overview of their budget materials uh, to us so you should have those at your seat um, in addition to this uh, they did a nice job in the budget pamphlet of highlighting how Dane's anticipated costs for the next school year um, so I think they've uh, done a nice job uh, just uh, going out of their way to try to keep our board members informed of what's included in the BOCES budget for next year and how it relates to their local school uh, so you can make an informed decision next week uh, or I'm sorry when we next meet uh, Ann and I have gone through these materials in detail and I would encourage you if you have any questions to please forward them on to me and Ann uh, what we can't answer ourselves we'll be sure to get answers for you uh, from BOCES so that's the first item for me just a few other notes for me uh, some extended comments uh, you may have read in recent uh, NISBA periodicals on board uh, newspaper that you all receive uh, matters related to the substantial equivalency requirement which was a shift in uh, regulation where local school districts uh, who within their attendance zone have any parochial schools or independent schools have to go through a process to uh, with the independent or parochial school uh, where they have to we have to certify uh, that they are providing a substantially equivalent education uh, to the students who for the students who attend that school uh, and this impacts us because the Manitou school is within our attendance zone so um, I'm pleased to report that uh, Maria Stein Morrison and myself were in a training today uh, together um, I've had the opportunity to visit the Manitou school um, in other settings and uh, Maria and her team do a wonderful job there uh, but I just wanted the board to be aware that that, that is a matter as you're reading about it in newspapers impacts us and impacts Manitou. Um, I am encouraged through uh, continued discussions with Maria uh, prior to today's training and through today's training that uh, we're going to be able to go through that process uh, um, uh, fairly well. Um, I know Manitou uh, runs a, uh, a good school there and um, uh, I'm encouraged that we'll be able to um, certify uh, their process when the time comes uh, next school year. So just a heads up on that as well. I feel like we were doing something similar previously. Is this, is this really officially new? This is new. Um, the only thing I can think of that may have related uh, through Title I um, if any independent or parochial schools receiving Title I funding from the school, uh -huh. uh, school districts are supposed to certify the Title I program that may exist at a local school. Uh, but other than that, this is a new regulation. Yeah. I think there were other um, things that we worked on with men too. Um, I remember Dr. Bowers specifically, but I don't think it was certification yes, of their, thing. no. Yeah. Uh, my, if there were, uh, I would say, just based on my experience with Title I in the past and other regulations, it was probably more narrow in scope. This is a pretty, uh, this is a full review of all matters related to the operation of the school. Everything from program to are the fire drills conducted. <laughs> so it's quite comprehensive. And uh, um, so uh, we were going through those materials today. And again, um, uh, we'll see how that plays out next school year, but I'm sure it will be fine. It's another unfunded mandate. It is an unfunded mandate. Yeah. <laughs> just, yeah. Yeah. And for us, with one school locally, 
it is what it is. Uh, um, the onus really is initially on the the school, uh, the independent or the parochial, uh, to gather these materials and present them to me in turn to present to the Board of Education. And the Board of Education is the body that has to certify um, and endorse whether students are receiving a substantially equivalent uh, education at the school or not based on the review that the superintendent or his or her designee has conducted. Um, so there, but you can imagine in some communities, uh, those especially that are more population dense, there may be multiple parochial schools, there may be multiple uh, um, independent schools, um, schools of the like uh, in, in place. Uh, now there was a district I was sitting next to had nine schools, so nine in their attendance zone. Uh, so that's nine separate reviews that have to be facilitated. Uh, so that certainly does draw the resources uh, of the school um, to that particular mandate. I do think the BOCES is trying to be proactive to see if there's an opportunity for them to provide a service uh, to school districts, which may be an option for us. So it doesn't become something that's drawing our attention out off of the Haldane campus, but we'll see. Um, I think there'll be more to come on that, but I just wanted to make sure that you were aware of it. Next, uh, Alteris did complete their safety audit, and I had the opportunity to meet with um, John LaPlaca and uh, Brian Shanahan from Alteris yesterday, along with Ann Dinio and Nabil Botros. Our administrative team is currently reviewing the audit. Uh, I can say the audit was conducted, uh, um, you know, it was quite comprehensive. It was presented in a very, uh, uh, I think, a very easy to read uh, and understand format. Uh, and what I was really pleased with from Alteris is the supporting um, materials that they provide us for now action planning off of that audit. Uh, and we were, we'll go through that as an administrative team. I'll share the audit with the uh, Board of Education through the Friday report so you have a chance to review it. Uh, we do consider that to be a secure document uh, at this time, uh, but I uh, had the chance to go through, uh, actually Deputy Shelters was going through uh, parts of the audit with the safety committee yesterday. Uh, to give them an idea of what, uh, how comprehensive it was and what it entailed. And I think uh, the initial reaction of the safety committee was one of, uh, they were quite pleased, uh, again, with the, uh, the way the audit was facilitated, how quickly it, it was turned back to the school district, and seems to be in alignment. Uh, as you know, we have many folks uh, on the safety committee with uh, law enforcement background um, or emergency management uh, backgrounds of various sorts. Uh, it's really um, a group with a lot of expertise and I think they were able to see that the audit um, identified issues that they very well saw or have seen in their experience with the schools and are encouraged that those areas will be addressed in the near future. So uh, there'll be more to come on that. I'll actually have some comments on that when we get to our next uh, presentation. Lastly, uh, one uh, item that requires perhaps uh, some conversation among the board. I had attended the Communities That Care Coalition meeting uh, last week and uh, had some follow-up conversations with the county and also with uh, Ms. Pack McCarthy uh, who serves as a, our liaison uh, in that work with the CTC. Um, and uh, you're familiar with the prevention needs assessment which we, uh, which is a survey uh, our students take in the fall uh, and that's facilitated uh, through the Prevention Council. Um, the results of that assessment have been provided to the school district. Uh, we received the results of that and um, the slide deck uh, earlier in March. And we scheduled them to come and provide an overview of those results to the Board of Education uh, at our June 18th workshop meeting. And we have a pretty full agenda up to that point, so really there were only two dates to provide. Uh, May 21st is our budget vote. Not a good night. <laughs> April 23rd uh, was provided as an option in June 18th, uh, being two workshop meetings. Uh, unfortunately, folks from Prevention Council have a conflict on the 23rd, uh, so the 18th became the date of choice. The issue is the CTC uses those results as part of their planning for the following school year, and their last meeting is in May. So um, we typically go through this with the board first, then it's shared with the CTC second. Um, so uh, the parties had a conversation, uh, and what I'm uh, checking in with the board about is, uh, would the board be open, I said I would ask, uh, to the results of the survey um, and the overview being provided to the CTC at their May meeting, um, 
in turn, I can provide a digital, uh, the digital report to the Board of Education. However, we wouldn't have the Prevention Council available to do their presentation again until June. Um, uh, unless, uh, potentially, you wanted me to bring them in or see if they were available for a regular business meeting. Um, I only provided the workshop meeting dates, um, so that may be an option as well. I said I would check this out. Um, it's really up to our Board of Education. Um, this is my first time going through this uh, with you, so I've come to understand the history a little bit, um, and I want to make sure uh, that I, this is being done, and as I'm speaking on behalf of the school, that it's re reflective of what the board wants to be done at this point. Go ahead. <laughs> Are you going to say we can't do it on the budget night? I'm saying that this is a really important issue to our school, and I think we need a meeting. Whether we make a special meeting, whether okay. we, I think we need a meeting. Okay. I think the results have to be processed, though. I don't want a meeting to happen without. Right, the processing I, of these results. Um, it sounds to me that May would be okay because usually what's happened, I know this is your first year, mm -hmm. <laughs> we have an event. Actually, there may be a concert. I think there is a concert. There is a concert. At like when at 7.30 or something. Isn't there the, a music uh, concert or right. something? Yeah. Okay. Because <laughs> prior, uh, we usually attend... Um, the concert or whatever event is held prior to that. And it's like middle school concert or something. So what is Julia's Nothing's looking at? Nothing's on the calendar? I don't see, I don't see one. Uh, middle school concert's on the 16th. Okay. So that makes calendar. this even... It makes this easier. But easier. Are, are you sh but oh, really? I don't see another event that night on the... Well, it may not be on the calendar, but there was always, you know, it may not have made the it calendar, but the, the calendar, calendar was yet. printed. Yeah. But we always plan something mm -hmm. with the hopes that people are coming to the school anyway sure. to see their children, so they'll they'll come in so, and vote. Sure I think we should wiggle it into one of the business meetings. So I'll present the business meeting. You know, the one that? in April. I that's guess April that's, yeah. today. that's today. <laughs> that's today. <laughs> and then the 23rd's uh, a workshop. So the May, the one in early May, maybe? If possible. May 7th. Uh, or May 8th. Sorry. Whatever the, okay. the first one in May is. I mean, I think I think Margaret's right. I think we should have a, a public meeting around the results. Sure. Uh, May, with 7th. May 7th. May 7th with the presentation. From I'll present that as an option. Yep. We normally Council. do. I think the issue is here this year is a conflict of schedules i mean they yeah, always right. come every year at the ctc and present their yeah. data i think there was a slight delay on their end in just remember they're they're working with all the school districts in the county so uh, my sense is from speaking to others that the final presentation that they've developed for us came a little later than it historically has uh, so Again, just by function of it coming later, we're just that much further into the budget season, which tends to be a busy time with presentations. Uh, so there's only so many meetings left. And uh, they happen to have a conflict on the one uh, I know that I presented as an option. Uh, they were on for June 18th, uh, or I have them on as, uh, on June 18th. Uh, uh, but again, the CTC just happens to be ending their annual meetings uh, prior to that. And maybe as a backup, we should confirm if there is something scheduled on the on 21st. The 21st. And it if like there is. Because but if there's not, sure. then they that can maybe an come option in as then. Well. Sure. Great. So I'll use the seventh and potentially the twenty first as a backup. Mm -hmm. I think that Thank you. sounds like a good plan. They usually present to at a PTA meeting or something. Uh, as well. I've come to understand that as well. So it's typically I skipped over that, but typically it's the board, then the PTA, then the CTC. And you know, we're trying to be good partners. I understand that the CTC and appreciate that they're using these uh, data as part of their planning efforts uh, because those, again, they're coordinating uh, mul or serving as a support in coordinating uh, the resources of multiple agencies, one of which is us, <laughs> um, in their work. So we want them to have access to this. But respectfully, it's a school-based survey, and I share that. Um, it's falling under the auspices of the school. Um, it is... Uh, it is our student data, uh, so um, I wouldn't feel comfortable proceeding and provide and allowing for that information to be shared or endorsing that it be shared uh, without uh, being on the same page with our board. Okay. 
So, all right, that's great. Thank you. Uh, at this point, that concludes my comments, and I think we can turn it over at this uh, to Anne yeah. for so Ms. Stinio, another you're budget on. presentation. Okay. Thank you, Anne. I'm going to slide over. Thank you. So, tonight we're going to review our estimated revenues for the budget. Over the weekend, the uh, state budget was adopted, and there were just a couple of items that um, affected us financially. We received $28,123 increase over the executive budget proposal that we've been working with um, that was released in January. Of that $28,123, 8,272 is foundation aid. The rest of it um, represents uh, changes in expense-driven um, aid formula adjustments. So um, the property tax cap is now permanent. And the budget authorizes us to establish a teacher's retirement system reserve fund. Um, up till now, we've had an employee's retirement reserve fund. Um, so before June 30th, just in, in case um, we are able to fund it, um, we'll be coming back to the board to ask you to establish that reserve. Um, we don't have all the wordings on it yet because they're still going through the guidance of, of analyzing the budget. Um, and then the expense-driven aid formulas um, that were up for consolidation and reduction Luckily, they were rejected so that we don't have to worry about less aid in those categories going forward. And the property tax cap being permanent, there was a, a push to um, try to encourage some changes to the property tax cap uh, prior to it being made permanent. It's my understanding that none of those changes happened. Is that None correct? of those changes happened. They're still um, trying to negotiate maybe having some additional exemptions, mm -hmm. um, but right now it's as it has as been. Thank you. Yes. Again, this is just a review of the property tax cap um, amount that the one of the board's parameters was to go up to the, the tax levy limit, which makes our levy limit 2.71% increase and our estimated tax rate increase usually follows what our levy increase is because most of our budget is, is taxes and our state aid, as you can see, does not go up a whole lot every year. So again, as I, I've already stated that the board established a parameter for the administration to develop the budget up to the tax levy limit. So keeping that in mind, um, it's the administration's proposal to utilize that additional 28,123 in the budget recommendation. Here are some key figures and what has changed since the last time that you saw this information is that the total budget um, of $24,605 and $8 includes an increase of the $28,123. Um, our budget to budget increase is up 2.22%. It was 2.1%. Again, that $28,000 brings it up a little bit more, but that does not change the tax levy increase or the estimated tax rate increase because we are already at the levy limit. Just a summary of there's other revenue in our budget. Um, those uh, in that category are prior year expenditure refunds. Usually that comes from BOCES. When we pay for services throughout the year and what we estimate that we're going to um, contract with BOCES for, if we don't use everything that we've paid for, it's refunded the following year. Um, interest earned and one of the bigger uh, 
categories is tuition from other districts, specifically Garrison, because we we get the um, their high school students that choose to come here, as everyone knows. But no um, changes are anticipated. Actually, um, it's an even amount. The the seniors um, that are moving on are matched um, exactly with with the amount of freshmen that we anticipate getting. You saw this slide last time. This is our revenue summary. Again, what has changed is the proposed budget has been increased and the state aid line went up. So if you see that the increase in state aid over the 1819 budget is $6,792. If you recall the last time that we talked about this, that was a negative 21,000. Just a reminder that our library levy continues year after year for the amount of $73,150. This proposition passed in May of 2015, and um, this amount will be on the tax bill every year going forward. And um, with the property tax cap um, law came a little bit different um, calculation for the contingent budget that um, when your budget if it goes down in May um, the district has the option to either go right to a contingent budget or have a revote if the budget is uh, failed twice in May and in June we have to enact a contingent budget with no increase in the tax levy so since our levy um, is at the limit going up 527 824 those would be the reductions that we would be looking at um, should the budget fail twice here are some key dates um, for the budget to be adopted by the board at the next meeting our public hearing where the entire budget document is um, available on May 7th and our vote on the 21st was a little bit better news than uh, we anticipated and I mean little bit <laughs> um, any questions or comments at this time Bill, do you have uh, designs on how you're gonna spend our <laughs> windfall yes <laughs> the I alluded to in my earlier comments about the all terrace assessment uh, and so just something I'm sitting with right now, and I'll define this more for the board uh, over the course of the next few weeks before April 23rd. Uh, so as part of our April 23rd um, Board of Education meeting, I'll, I'll elaborate further, but I just want to give you an idea of some things I'm sitting with. Uh, there are several technology-related um, areas um, that came through uh, the assessment. Um, so when we talk about camera systems and we talk about um, visitor management system uh, even now John LaPlaca was sharing uh, door access in many schools instead of being key based now are, are moving to swipe based even in, on the interior of the school so we're used to folks swiping in to get into the building but because keys can become quite an issue to manage and the distribution of keys and collecting keys at the end of the school year um, the swipe cards work uh, just as readily for classrooms and they can be managed through a computer management system so if one gets lost no big deal you can just disable the key uh, through the management system so a lot of these safety related matters are being addressed through technology um, and new technology uh, that's e easier to utilize, easier to implement, and easier to manage. Uh, so I'm sitting with the results of the audit and thinking about additional funding and how we may utilize some of that additional funding to address areas of need 
uh, for technology. Uh, and it wouldn't necessarily be an investment in the technology itself. What I'm thinking of is when you bring all this technology in, it has to be managed. Uh, and the prospect of, and where some districts uh, issues they run into is they buy all the technology, but they don't have a plan for the management of the technology in place. Uh, so I'm trying to think ahead because we already have the technology for the most part as part of the uh, capital uh, referendum. Uh, so I'm thinking about the management piece of that and potentially could some of these funds be designated um, or put towards uh, further support for management of technology infrastructure on campus. So that's part one. Uh, part two would be strategic planning. Uh, we've kind of circled around it at various points this school year. Actually, John's brought it up once or twice or alluded to it. Um, but he's right. We're at the five-year point of our last strategic plan. Typically, uh, after five years, you come back and do some sort of review of the plan. Uh, having an external facilitator for the strategic planning process, there are many, uh, but I, it, it's appropriate to have an external facilitator. Um, it just helps the group, whatever group comes together, really focus on the process. Uh, so that's something that I, you know, I've heard this year is we're addressing uh, through goals many areas of long-term need, but what's the vision? Where are we going over the next five years? And where are we and where are we going? So uh, we may want to commit some of those fundings to a strategic planning facilitation process to further establish uh, that guiding vision uh, that we can then utilize as a framework in our educational planning for the years to come. Uh, so those are two quick thoughts. And your feedback is certainly welcome at this point, but I'll define it even further uh, for you on April 23rd, I realize I'm You've had one speaking day to quite think broadly about it. <laughs> one whole day yeah yeah yep. so came up with a few things in came a up day. with a few okay. things and in that one day Anne had to give me a number and luckily the number was in the positive and not the negative so I wouldn't even say I've had a day to think about it. <laughs> Anne and I went through this this morning so um, but no we anticipate both ways you know what if we get more what if we get less and um, we know if we're getting more we're not getting a lot more so there was some forethought. Good. Any other? But everything counts. I mean, even it does. that we'll small take it. amount of money we will take it. is, um, you know, the two things that you <coughs> laid out are both um, important needs yes. that need to yep. have be funded somehow. So, yeah. and I think really where we're at, uh, you know, Anne has done a, a really a very good job in going through uh, our budget in with incredible detail or attention to detail. So it's really the work that Anne has done in the preceding months that put us in a position to have a quick conversation and already anticipate where we would go if we get 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 additional dollars. Um, so it, it's really a credit to Anne. Um, it also happens to be Anne's birthday. So we want to make sure that. <laughs> you knew you weren't. I meant everything I said, even if it wasn't your birthday, Anne. <laughs> but she's done a great job. I couldn't think of any other way. I know. I know. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you um, for the presentation. I feel like we're in a uh, much different spot I, I, than previous. So I. Uh, I really do appreciate uh, the efforts that you've both Thanks. put in to this point. Uh, we do have an initial community forum coming up. Uh, my date escapes me. 22nd, so, Oh, it's the 22nd? Um, and then uh, some the bond walkthroughs will be coming up as well, so we'll continue to seek out community input on what we're putting together. Uh, but thus far, it's been pretty quiet. Any additional communication from the public? No? Okay. Moving on to information reports. These are here for our viewing, and we will uh, approve them at next meeting. <coughs> Consent agenda minutes. May I have a motion? Motion. Second. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Consent agenda financial. May I have a motion? Motion. Second. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Consent agenda personnel may I have a motion. So moved. Second. Questions or comments? 
All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, moving on to unfinished business. Ms. Famalaro, would you like to uh, give your spiel? <laughs> My spiel. Yes, uh, petition packets for prospective trustee candidates are available in the district office. They are due by 5 p.m. on April 22nd. Great, thank you for that reminder. Uh, moving on to CSC CPSE recommendations. Uh, the recommended action states, be it resolved, that upon the recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools, the Board of Education hereby approves the recommendations of the Committee on Special Education and Preschool Special Education as presented. May I have a motion? Motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Any communication from the public now? Good luck to uh, Ms. Hartford as we approved uh, your leave this evening. We wish you well. Uh, if there is no additional comments, we the I would like to make a motion to move into executive session where we will convene for the purpose of discussing the employment history of a particular individual and no action will be taken and we will not be returning. So, may I have second. a second? Second. Great. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>